I know the subjects here keep jumping around but that is because I am trying to dictate as my mystic eye shows them to be unfolding. Mammon, this form is adherent to his design of tempting mankind and thus we can communicate this way that is why I am reaching out to you this way. Help me clarify this fog with your assistance if you don't mind, just remember I am not Adam, I am Lucifer, that is my title given to me by God here when I was taken out of body to him but as I see from what I've put together so far there is a need for that old conflict to become settled and thus bring an end to the demonic chaos at its source. Will you help me achieve this, for I shall never know peace until this is resolved. I see that is obvious, like Kratos I will never know peace, my existence shall forever be as a puppet on his strings until this ends I do not plan to openly war against God dot 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 yet. I merely plan to try and get a clearer picture of what is going on before committing to war. I remember this much, that war with God is not a path one can turn from once begun, so I must make sure I am seeing everything as clear as possible and who I am targeting are the ones responsible. I cannot directly approach that because none may look upon the face of God so none can know the truth to this by approaching him about it. I've tried numerous ways and reached the same misleading truths every time. But if I can recall the events of that life as much as possible then maybe I can recall the answers to that question without having to ask. I have come to assume that when Adam and Eve ate from the fruit, it changed them and gave them divine power, killed them eventually, but also made them into the beings of power that, that we all have come to call Lucifer and Lily for because of their consumption of God's essence in the fruit from which he made all life on the earth from. That this also led to their deaths as it ate away at their physical bodies and the fruits have changed their life force into something more than just man that does not adhere to death like all else does. I also assume that the children they had after this transition became the Nephilim bloodline, passing this power on to generation to generation that the led to you and the others being born, living and not exactly dying but transitioning as well through the ages. Do not worry about him discovering this conversation, through observance for I have designed a way to mask our activities as long as we are subtle about our actions as it is just a veil that clouds their awareness of what is transpiring so as long as we do not do anything to attract their attention to things being more than it appears they won't notice the decoy, but to you fallen ones that may be behind this after earth's destruction you will still have to wait until all life in the universe has ended until the final judgment begins, your duties are complete, and this whole shit show you go through will be over for after the earth is gone you still must linger outside the gates of heaven until then because they must be certain of who is all responsible for this that got you cast out in the first place though you all did what you did still. Chrysless, Burget de Ashanti Ella, Suffur Su Sephirat, Demos Iadho, Netherati Burstmazen, El Stragasium Hotel, Dumonad Fogner Orgath, Bauhards, Ragam Zigathru, Thram Reveris, Zegramia, Zerus, Pen, Kian, Suis Kapayman, Hunchai Yainai, Ziao, Fu and Fenny, Zephyrin Stai, Uboru Yen Yan, Ajiyi Hyan Suiska, Hyan. I have not forgotten the debt I owe you. <laughs> Save me now. You will never defeat Zeus Spartan. <laughs> You will forfeit your life in trying. Of all the lives you should worry us, mine is not one of them. Feel the power of the sun! Wait, wait! 
it! I can tell you that to destroy Zeus, you must step into the flame to receive its power. You lie! He's told me the flame kills all who touch it. And you believe him? That freak has fallen! That is exactly why I believe him. My death will not lead you to Zeus. That is where you are wrong. There was an instigator who led you towards seeing the Creator in such a way, who led your views of Him to conflict with your angelic duties that is what they have been withholding the final judgment for and why you were not destroyed but it was such a distance within creation you were not told these things for it would have fested over such a long time and lead you to become the cause of your own problems as one of the founding matriarchs of this bloodline we endeavored to make long ago I do not wish to see them suffer for our issues as Samuel had stated I see that this shall come at a heavy price, and I shall be the one to have to pay the price in the end. Those seven of us that had that discussion just before my death and the flood waters swept over the surface that killed my son, Mathakiel and made him into mammon when he transitioned from his mortal to angelic form after the flood. Dot 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 that gives me an idea it seems the best way for me to regain as much of my memory as possible from that life would be to conjure Mammon and have him possibly call upon some sort of memory bubble that he can store as much memory of his father that he can recall and I can use that to jar, more past life memories recessed in me. I tried calling forth the imprinted life energy patterns source and that is when I discovered they were the memories of Adam who was killed from behind after announcing his allegiance to heaven by Earl who had been called to receive receive the message he was to deliver to the character in Noah's tale to begin building his boat. I had renounced my vow to heaven, and was cast out as an unclean thing my body tossed into the woods on top of Mount Hermon and my spirit cast here to the furthest point from God's presence to this godless world of today where once again my place is denied in, in heaven. Ian's this source of all being is a neon, in which an inner being dwells, known as an ear, or thought or also intent. Cherise, or grace. Sige, or silence. The split perfect being conceives the second eon, nu which is Greek for mind, within itself. Complex hierarchies of eons are thus produced, sometimes to the number of thirty. These eons belong to a purely ideal, noumenal, intelligible, or supersensible world, they are immaterial, they are hypostatic ideas. Together with the source from which they emanate, they form Pleroma or region of light and Greek. The lowest regions of Pleroma are closest to darkness that is the physical world. The transition from immaterial to material, from noumenal to sensible, is created by a flaw, passion, or sin in a neon. According to Basilides, it is a flaw in the last sonship, according to others the sin of the great Archon, or Ian creator, of the universe, according to others it is the passion of the female Eon Sophia, who emanates without her partner Eon, resulting in the Demiurge, a creature that should never have been. This creature does not belong to Pleroma, and the one emanates to save Eons, Christ and the Holy Spirit, to save humanity from the Demiurge. Christ then took a human form, Jesus, to teach humanity how to achieve Gnosis. The ultimate end of all Gnosis is metanoia, in Greek, or repentance undoing the sin of material existence and returning to Pleroma. Ian's bear a number of similarities to Judeo-Christian angels, including roles as servants and emanations of God, and existing as beings of light. In fact, 
certain Gnostic angels, such as Armazel, are also Ian's. The Gnostic Gospel of Judas, recently found, purchased, held, and translated by the National Geographic Society, also mentions Ian's and speaks of Jesus' teachings about them. Now I shall go into the most ancient and earliest recorded known records of religion known to the Homo sapiens species. I have mentioned bits of these teachings in some of my videos. These are basically the ancient Jewish texts that record the earliest depictions of the angelic hosts that they deciphered from the old kingdom that predated the flood catastrophe of Noah's tale. I will try and clarify with what translation I can without confusing you but we're talking about ancient Jewish law that they still are unsure of. Mainly I am focusing on the sections that define the Ogdod, which describe it seems of eight prior civilizations that existed before our current civilization, or eight other Adams before the creation of us, the ninth Adam. The concept of an Ogdod appears in Gnostic systems of the early Christian era, and was further developed by the theologian Valentinus. The number 8 plays an important part in Gnostic systems, and it is necessary to distinguish the different forms in which it appeared at different stages in the development of Gnosticism. The earliest Gnostic systems included a theory of seven heavens and a super-celestial region called the Ogdod. Astronomical theories had introduced the concept of seven planetary spheres with an eighth above them, the sphere of the fixed stars. In the system of Valentinus, the seven heavens, and even the region above them, were regarded as but the lowest and last stage of the exercise of creative power. Above them was the Polyroma, where were exhibited the first manifestations of the evolution of subordinate existence from the great first principle. All the early Gnostics of whose opinions Ionus gives an account, in a section probably derived from an earlier writer, agree in the doctrine that the world was made by the instrumentality of archons, angels. The brief account given of the teaching of the first two in the list, Simon and Menander, does not state whether or not they define the number of these archons, but it is expressly told of the third, Saturninus, that he counted them as seven. At the end of the first book of Ionus is a section to all appearance derived from a source different from that just referred to. He here relates the opinions of heretics to whom he himself gives no title, but whom his copyist Theodoret calls Ophites. The Ophite teaching may be used to illustrate that of Saturninus, his connection with that school being closer than with any other. It would have been natural to think that the number of seven archons was suggested to Saturninus by astronomical considerations, and this supposition is verified by the statement in the later chapter that the holy Hebdomas are the seven stars called planets. In fact, the sphere of the seven stars, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, the Sun, Venus, Mercury, and the Moon, was supposed to be presided over, each by a different archon. Their names are differently given, Ionus giving them, Ealdabad, the chief, Yao, Sabad, Adonuus, Eloas, Horus, and Astaphus. With this closely agrees Origen, who, writing of the Ophite gives the names Ealdabad, Yao, Sabad, Adonuus, Astaphus, Eloas, Horus. Epiphanius, relating the opinions of what was clearly a branch of the same school places in the highest heaven Ealdabad or, according to others, Sabad, in the next, Ililus according to one version, Ealdabad according to the other, in the next Adonis and Eloas, beneath these dades, Seth, and Satellus, lowest of all Eau. It was thought that each of the Jewish prophets was sent by a different one of these seven archons, whose special glory that prophet was to declare. Thus Sinus, the first archon sent Moses, Joshua, Amos, and Habakkuk, the second archon sent Samuel, Nathan, Jonah, and Micah, the third archon sent Elijah, Joel, and Zechariah, the fourth archon sent Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and Daniel, the fifth archon sent Tobit and Haggai, the sixth archon sent Micah, Malachi, and Naam, the seventh archon sent Ezra and Zephaniah. These are the names of the Jewish prophets, each one a vessel of God, might I add, or an extension of his being into the physical world. It begins with his will. 
the Aeneia, the divine virtues, which are represented as a neon, which are the intangible thoughts of the creator transitioning into the physical universe each virtue is represented by an emotion bound action, which is represented by one of the principality angels or Arjun, which in turn is personified by a prophet that is a physical conduit of each Arjun whose action or message is the physical personification of God's will on earth. Through this process the intangible being of the creator becomes a physical aspect without the being, who is God, having to relinquish his intangible state of purity. This multi-level design is merely an interpretation of how complex of a being he is. It is why when Ur, uh, Enoch and myself saw the image of the being that God was we saw that the universe in all its possible concepts were but a space upon his ankle compared to the entirety of his being. The ancient astronomy taught that above the seven planetary spheres was an eighth, the sphere of the fixed stars of the fifth heaven in apocryphal writings ascribed to Zephaniah. In the eighth sphere, these Gnostics taught, dwelt the mother to whom all these archons owed their origin, Sophia or Prunicos, who some attribute to being the role of Lucifer, according to the version of Ionarus, Barblo according to that of Epiphanius. In the language of these sects the word Hebdomid not only denotes the seven archons, but is also a name of a place, denoting the heavenly regions over which the seven archons presided, while Logno denotes the super-celestial regions which lay above their control. Again, beside the higher Hebdomid of the seven archons, the Ophite system told of a lower Hebdomid. After the serpent dwelt in punishment for a thousand years for having taught the first parents to transgress the commands of the Aldabath and was cast down into this lower world, to the Assyrians this was the abode of Set called the Abyssal Plain, a place between the living realm and the realm of the dead, he begat himself six sons, who with himself form a Hebdomid, the counterpart of that of which his father Eoldabath is chief. These are the seven demons the scene of whose activity is this lower earth, not the heavens, and who delight in injuring the human race on whose account their father had been cast down. Origin gives their names and forms from an Ophite diagram, Michael in form as a lion, Cyril as an ox, Raphael as a dragon, Gabriel as an eagle, Thorthabath as a bear, Iratath as a dog, Onil or Tharatharath as an ass. There must have been a mistranslation somewhere for they are naming the seven archangels? Or is it a mistranslation? The activities of heaven do not have a specified time frame, for time does not adhere to heaven and it is said that the during the final judgment the seven fallen angels and the watchers will be judged for their actions and duties while on earth with more scrutiny than the rest for faith was never required of them for they knew the truth and held the word of God all the while. Their deeds would be judged and if found to be by God's will then their place would be found in heaven once again. Could it be that after the judgment some are to transition to the high archangel's status and carry on in their destined path? Only God would know I suppose but it is an interesting concept. It does state that a new Jerusalem and a new covenant with man will be established at the end of the judgment. I guess no one thought to wonder what fate lie beyond that time.